What's up, y'all? And welcome back to Dad Needs to Talk. I'm your host, Robert, and today, today I am doing a Game Talk specific episode of the podcast because it's been a couple of weeks, life has been busy, kids just finished up their first week of school, and I had to get some dental work done, so I haven't had the time, and my face has been in too much pain <laughs> to talk for like the last like week or so, or whatever. But I wanted to do this um, quick little episode just as we're on the precipice of Concord releasing on PS5 and PC in the coming days. So I wanted to catch up on, find a little news, tidbits, and stuff regarding that or whatever. And later in the show, before I end, I also want to make sure I uh, touch on some stuff with the. Uh, just, just give some like some closing thoughts on like uh, the uh, Game Informer shutdown that happened a couple weeks ago um, that I haven't had time to because I haven't recorded. So, yeah, so let, let's let's dive right in. Okay, so as always, I will have maybe some timestamps down below, just kind of separating some stuff for the discussion. Um, but yeah, so we are here, y'all. We are just a couple of days away from the Concord. Um, at least the early access launch, which will be August 20th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on PS5 and PC. And then Friday the 23rd, same times uh, for the full standard release. So, yeah. So, first off, I want to say shout out to the, uh, the Concord Discord group because we have been discussing and holding, holding each other down. <laughs> through the wait and the times as, as we get ready to head into the launch of uh, Concord. But yeah, so I, I've already done a couple of previous episodes and discussions on Concord, talking about the beta and other new stuff, whatever. So if you want more, go check out those. But yeah, so here we are, y'all. Just a couple of days from launch and I'm excited and I'm ready to finally dive in play the game get a chance to see more of the different maps and stuff and i guess i'll just say just for contextual purposes uh, once again concord is a 5v5 multiplayer shooter from firewalk studios um which is a in-house playstation studio and like i said this game will be launching on ps5 and pc in the coming days and the game will have 16 characters at launch and 12 maps and six gameplay modes. So over the last week, we've got a lot of information and things of that nature since I did this at the last update a few weeks ago. So one of the things I wanted to point out first though, before I get to like all the information is that I feel like, and maybe I'm tripping, but I think that they went through and they did like some like minor tweaks and updates to the Concord web page. And what I mean by that is because originally when you went to this character section or whatever, they were all listed um, horizontally or whatever, had a horizontal scroll, but now they've updated it and broken them down, all the characters down into their respective groups. So you got your Wardens with Lennox, Hamar, and Vale. Breachers with Starchild and Davers, Rangers with Teo, Jabali, and Duchess, Anchors with uh, One Off and Amari, and then the Haunts, which are uh, which is Baz, Itzy, and Roka, and the Tacticians, Lark, Daw, and Kips. So, just as a reminder, my main ones that I've been really enjoying has been Lark. Kips and Jabali. So Jabali was the first one I ever really vibed with um, a couple weeks back, whatever, when the beta first came out during that first weekend. And then over the coming time, whatever, I really started enjoying Lark and then Kips a little bit. And uh, and I even started playing with, uh, who is it, uh, Davers a little bit um, before the beta ended and stuff. So, but yeah, so. I just wanted like to just point that out because I noticed that they made like some slight tweaks and stuff to how that presentation and stuff was on their website. So yeah, so like I said, with the launch coming up, so in the past couple of weeks, 
Uh, we have also gotten two more animated shorts. Um, the second one was with Amari, Baz, and Vail. And then the most recent one had Kips, Duchess, and Roca, um, which also gave us a, uh, a face reveal for Roca because she's normally wearing this headgear and you don't know what her face looks like and gave, gave the fans a cool little uh, peek behind the curtain, so to speak, <laughs> uh, on, on what, uh, what Roca looks like. So a couple of things that we got this week they are much needed and honestly probably wish we might would have gotten this information maybe before the beta but it is what it is you can't change the past but i definitely feel like a couple of these things definitely would have been very useful for people to have knowledge of going into the beta before people went to the beta played for a couple rounds and then just blindly started heading on it because they didn't really know or understand and get all the proper information and stuff so one thing so we ended up getting a five minute long video on the playstation channel called launch and the adventurer head and this video was with i believe it was the uh yes the design director josh hamrick and then the game director ryan ellis and they both kind of went through this pretty nice and lengthy uh, breakdown of the game. Talking about like, you know, like their design philosophy and different things like that, um, as well as the crew builder system. And what was the other one? Uh, shoot, it was the, the, the crew builder system, the roadmap and stuff, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. And just other little things like that that a lot of people, you know, that on the surface level when you're just playing the game would be like, oh, okay, this this might seem like just like a regular shooter or whatever. But them deep diving into the more nuanced aspects and stuff of it was pretty dope. And like I said, it definitely could have been needed um, before the beta and stuff came out. But hey, at least I'm glad that, that we got it. So yeah, so go check that out. That was a very... Um, key piece of information that we got and then on the roadmap front so they gave us this little infographic kind of detailing you know what things will look like at launch and then the tentative roadmap for now so right now we at least have an idea of when the first three seasons will launch so at launch we're going to be at uh, season zero and so season one will come in October, season two in January, and then season three we see off to the side as uh, as April, but with not much information. But one constant thing is that uh, in each of the seasons, we're going to get at least one new free gunner, one new map, some new character variants, um, cosmetics, and of course story stuff, whatever. Um, also coming with the season one update, they're going to have a cosmetic only, um, uh, shop that they're going to put in the game, whatever. So along with all of the free stuff that you unlock, just pro progressing throughout the game, whatever, both, um, on your account level and now on your individual character leveling up, they will also later on add in the ability to outright buy cosmetics and stuff whatever which hey it is what it is um speaking of launching pricing and stuff what i forgot to mention so the standard edition of the game just as a refresher will be 40 bucks at launch or 60 bucks for the deluxe edition which gives you three day early access to play on tuesday versus friday now we did get like a quick kind of like little glance at some of the cosmetic stuff for some of the characters whatever and I'm interested to see more of this from a lot of the different characters and stuff. So, but, um, I, I like the, what's her name, uh, Haymar with like the kind of like blonde hair look and stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to see the different variants, you know, the weapon skins and things of that nature. Um, I really like this look for uh, Lennox, the one we kind of like, that kind of like purple, purplish. Um, and pink 
we look go on our tour and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that day they kind of like to just kind of give like a brief rundown or like a quick glance, I should say, of some of the different uh, variety of the cosmetics and things of that nature. So, uh, and of course on here, like I said, they also more detail the crew bonus stuff and how that system will work and better night your crews and stuff. Um, what else was it? Um, oh, they also did a whole separate blog post just kind of dedicating, dedicated to talking about their accessibility options and stuff. So that is out there as well. So they talk about how they're going to have stuff like a ping system and of course lots of end menu options and stuff but they also and you know they're gonna they um they're gonna have a training area how to play description and they also talk about how some characters so character op optimization we've designed certain characters to have abilities and weapons that consider players who may experience motor behaviors so like lark one of my favorite characters that i've enjoyed so far Lark's gameplay focuses on moving around the map and placing spores to create an extended area that buffs your teammates and debuffs your enemies rather than engaging in direct combat. Direct combat. Uh, Lark's weapon does not rely on precision or require a direct line of sight to the enemy to be effective. If, if it fires a projectile that hangs in the air and then bursts into homing projectiles when a target comes close. So that's just like, like one description. And that's one of the reasons why I love Lark is just, um, as I said in my last episode, the uh, spray and pray. <laughs> just shoot the spores out there or whatever. And then somebody gets close enough, they're home and seek and find them and stuff. So which, which I found so, so fun to do. But, uh, but yeah, so go check that out for more detail on the various um, accessibility options and stuff. I'm trying to think, what was the other... Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, th those are kind of like kind of like the main things I just wanted to touch on. As far as, like I said, with the news roundup and stuff, whatever. So, like I said, I am excited for it. Um, this will be the last weekend without Concord being out in the wild, which is very exciting because honestly... I woke up kind of early this morning as I was laying in bed. I was like, man, it'd be nice to toss on Concord right now <laughs> and, and, and play some matches while everybody in the house is sleeping and stuff. So, but hey, the, the dream isn't too far away, but, uh, but yeah, I, I am excited. And like I've mentioned before, I'm not going to give it too much attention, but I'm also excited so that those of us that are genuinely interested in the game, can play it and then hopefully any naysayers or the loud vocal minority online can move on because it is like every online post every comment section whatever is just tons of just hateful and nasty comments and like I've mentioned before it's like it's okay every every game every TV show every movie every anime every manga everything isn't going to be for everybody but you know there there's a reason why certain things speak to certain people like i've mentioned before i haven't really been into multiplayer games in like five six years which did the math that's about how long my youngest son has been alive <laughs> but yeah but i don't know I, and, and I've, I've never really been much of a multiplayer person as is but just something about the pace and things with concord is what's really got my attention with it and stuff so because i am personally happy that it's not a super crazy frenetic fast-paced thing like a call of duty or some of these other shooters and stuff where it's like super twitchy and reactionary or whatever to where it's like okay hey we all or I have an equal fighting chance to take out somebody in Concord and also I am happy to be here to be there at the launch at the start of something new 
because yes there are lots of other multiplayer shooters and stuff that have been around for a long time and yada 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 but sometimes some of those communities or just some of those games aren't as beginner friendly or as welcoming to people who might want to try getting into them into them new or whatever without feeling like they're dragging down their team or without getting hateful comments and things of that nature or whatever so that's why okay hey concord is an opportunity for people like me to get in on the ground floor with something new new world new characters etc etc and just to have fun you know i'm not here looking for a game that i'm going to live in for the next five to ten years uh, I am happy to pay my 40 bucks to get the game and then all future content will be included at no extra charge because as a father of five and between my wife and kids they all play a lot of online stuff my kids all play stuff like Roblox and Fortnite and NBA 2K and stuff whatever and I know how much money <laughs> pours into those different things whatever, for all these cosmetics or these season packs or these uh, battle passes and all the stuff whatever and it is like man like like just just tossing money into a bottomless pit or whatever versus it's like hey I pay 40 bucks and that's it and I have a feeling that I would get more than $40 worth out of this game and stuff and like I said and kind of know what the foreseeable future is with this game and stuff so but yeah so that's the reasons why i am excited for concord and i'm looking forward to its launch in the coming days and stuff and i hope that anybody else out there that might be excited for it hey hit me up let me know i'm here to talk about it or like i said hey if you want to join a community or whatever the official concord discord has been pretty welcoming to people and stuff um i've been in there since it opened back during the beta and stuff whatever and like i said we have tons of fun conversations every day there's channels dedicated to you know theories and community creations um channels for people looking to squat up and things like that or whatever so so yeah so go check that out like i said if, if you're looking for a genuine community and stuff whatever and yeah so let me know your thoughts below um try to keep it positive please and if you're excited for the game let me know who are some of your favorite characters from the game and stuff and uh yeah and hopefully i will see y'all out there in the uh traversing the concord galaxy in the coming days weeks and months so yeah so I think that was all I had to say with Concord. Let me do, just do one last check before I move over to move over to talk about Game Informer. All right, y'all. So I didn't have anything else to say about Concord. So let, let's jump over to talking about the unfortunate closure of Game Informer magazine. So I spent the last like 20 minutes running around my house trying to find my collection of Game Informers and I have no clue where they are because I know over the years, at one point, I think I gave them to my nephews or I gave some to my nephews or whatever. And then I know I've given some to my kids over the years and stuff. And so I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know if they're tucked away in a box somewhere in the house or if they're at, you know, at my sister's house with my nephews or whatever in their room somewhere. Who knows? But Game Informer. Uh, I guess the, 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 the key word to be said would be unceremoniously shut down by GameStop. Uh, I think it's been two weeks ago now. Um, Game Informer is almost as old as I am. I am 34. Game, I just turned 34 this year. Game Informer was 33. So pretty much my entire existence, pretty much Game Informer has always been there. So... Game Informer was a gaming magazine, which actually, let, let me do my, my due diligence. Okay, so I got the wiki page brought up because I feel like if I'm going to do this, I want to do this properly just to 
archive the history. So, Game of Former debuted in August 1991 um, when the video game retailer Funko Land started publishing an in-house newsletter. It was acquired by the retailer GameStop, which bought Funko Land in 2000. Due to this, a large amount of promotion was done in store, which continued, uh, which contributed to the success of the magazine. As of June 2017, it was the fifth most popular magazine by copies circulated. So, so yeah, so that that's kind of like the origins of Game Informer. It was started at Funko Land, and then when GameStop came and bought up Funko Land, they also got Game Informer as part of, part of it. And just for a little bit of added context, whatever for myself, I used to work for GameStop as a retail associate. Um, I did it on and off about four years collectively, my time there, from 2008 to 2014. So, like I said, a couple stints here and there, whatever. But, uh, um, was it 2014? Yeah, 2014. Yeah, 2008 is when I got, is when I did it for the first time for about six months um, after high school at Frisco Stonebriar Mall. And then over my years, I've worked at the Frisco Mall. I worked at the Little Am Store, Marshall, Texas. Those are like 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 the handful of locations I worked at. And being where I live, up in the DFW Metroplex, GameStop's headquarters is here in DFW. I literally pass by it all the time. It is maybe like 15 minutes from where I live, and so. So yeah, so we were of course very intimate with the Game Informer because even long before I was working for GameStop, I was a fan of the magazine growing up because myself, I grew up in a very small country town named Jasper, Texas, uh, deep in Southeast Texas, right on the Texas-Louisiana border, and especially in the late 90s early 2000s or whatever I never had internet in my home um, I would have to walk to the library <laughs> for for internet access or, or get it at school or whatever during this time and so obviously we don't have the breadth of access and stuff that we have nowadays at our fingertips on our phones tablets whatever back then getting that subscription and then each month, the magazine coming to little old Jasper, to Ro little young Robert's mailbox was super awesome, man. Because it was just like coming through the pages, seeing what was on the cover and stuff. And yeah, just, just getting like a glimpse of like, man, like what is all these different games and stuff that they're talking about that they're showcasing and stuff. So it, it, it was definitely a special part of my life special part of my upbringing and stuff so and yeah because of it being in game stuff that definitely did help you know the 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 uh the promotion and stuff of it because i'm pretty sure that's probably how i ended up getting it was i think we were traveling somewhere because we definitely did not have a game stuff <laughs> in my town growing up uh i think we we they didn't put a game stop in jasper until Sometime in the last 10 years, and it's already gone. I think it shut down maybe a year or two ago. So the store didn't even last a good decade, I don't think. But, um, but yeah, so we were traveling somewhere, probably like Beaumont or something or whatever, and stopped by GameStop or whatever at the time, and that's when we signed up for the subscription and stuff, and we got it every month, but... Yeah, man. Yeah, it 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 was always, it, even even in recent memory, just the curiosity of what game would be on the cover, and yeah, I, I hadn't really read or thought about Game Informer to the scope of what I used to in my youth in recent years. But at least once a month, they would come across my timeline with, okay, Game Informer announces the new 
its new cover story uh, and it was always just kind of cool just seeing like the amazing art that was on the cover of the magazine now unfortunately when GameStop shut them down they also shut down the freaking website for Game Informer now one part of the Game Informer website that I loved all the time that I use all the time on this podcast was the video game release calendar it was very thorough it was very uh very useful for information purposes because it, i would look around for like dates and stuff whatever there's other places whatever but i felt like game informer had one of the best and because they listed everything they had all the platforms everything in between and they stayed on top of it if the game got delayed then hey <laughs> within the day or whatever somebody will go in and change the date or whatever update it and stuff but um but shout out to the internet because for the most part once something goes on the internet it is always there so shout out to the internet archive at archive.org and whoever the person or people are who went through and that have been archiving the game of former issues and stuff so I went searching for a specific one because there's one that always sticks out in my mind it is the, it is the July 2010 issue that had infamous 2 now, the, a lot of y'all know, I love the Infamous series, and, oops, and so, this cover was very legendary because of the fact that this was at the time when they were going to attempt to change Cole's face. And so it's all it's it's forever captured in the magazine or whatever his new look and stuff whatever, but fans were in such an uproar, which is very wild to think about now in 2024. How much of a fervor there was, considering this was 2010, <laughs> you know, but people were loud enough to where they got them to change his face back to how he looked in the original game, which I thought was super awesome. But the Game Informer stuff, whatever, had already uh, ran. And so you see the, the, this new look for Cole McGrath is forever immortalized in this magazine because it's like, yes, between when this issue came out and the game came out, they had already they, they were able to go through and make the changes and make and change his face back to where it was but a magazine hey it was already printed and it's already done so this is definitely a, a issue that forever sticks out in my mind like i said not only because i always um love game informer um or infamous i should say but just because this is a thing captured in time Another important thing that was in this issue as well was our first hint said Bungie working on Destiny. There is an article in here. Bungie teams up with Activision. Halo creators sign a 10-year contract for a new property. And so it is like stuff like this will be forever just captured. It is literally a time capsule in magazine form of just so many legendary and iconic moments and stuff um but yeah man I'm, I'm i'm just browsing through these different um game of former covers so the san andreas issue which are three. Oh yeah the 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 uh, epic mickey one was really dope yeah man it, it, it is just so many great memories of these cover stories and like I said like what they meant giving insight to youth like me who didn't have who grew up in a time where we didn't have constant access to the internet and we didn't have constant access to information um, oh another one of my favorites is this uh, September 2010 issue with uh, with Batman Arkham City on the cover um, I, I freaking had posters and stuff of this cover and some other stuff uh, hanging up uh, 
in the house, but yeah, man, th this is just, ah, what a time, man, what a time. Now, I, I, I do got to say shout out to, um, shout out to Men Max. So, whoops, did I already, did I close it by accident? I think I did. Let me pull it back up. So, Man Max is a Patreon slash podcast slash YouTube channel with the main creator, Ben Hansen, who used to work at Game Informer back in the day. And then I think he was part of a wave of layoffs, maybe five years or so ago, whatever. But anywho, he ended up leaving Game Informer and then starting Man Max. And so this channel has kind of become an extension of the legacy of Game Informer because a lot of his co-hosts and guests and stuff that regularly appear on the podcast and his different shows all worked at Game Informer at various points in time. And so there's probably no better person to take the charge on this than me and Max and Ben Hansen to where ever since the shutdown and stuff, whatever, he's kind of been doing some different content and podcast episodes and things of that nature to kind of highlight the people that worked there and the amazing work that they did. And so on his YouTube channel, he has a whole section uh, dedicated to the celebration of Game Informer. So I highly recommend anybody that's interested in my internet is tripping and going down memory lane on Game Informer and stuff to go and take a look at this channel and a lot of these uh, these episodes and stuff so I, I've listened to a couple of them but like I said definitely some very insightful stuff I'm talking to the you know previous um, editors and chiefs and some behind the scenes stuff um, I gotta watch this one he did like a four hour long Ultimate Game Informer reunion episode um, last week, but um, bam! So I just want to make sure I shout it out that for anybody that might be interested in more Game Informer stuff. But yeah, man, like I said, I don't have too much more to expand on. But like I said, I I couldn't let time continue to pass on without me just expressing my love and appreciation for Game Informer and for all that it did, um, like I said, for for me and my youth. Uh, let me see another one of my favorites is this uh this uh Dishonored two, I think this is Dishonored two, um, cover that they did. So, but my internet is tripping, so stuff isn't loading up properly right now. But um, but yeah, so let me know what, if any, are some of your favorite Game Informer memories and things like that. Um. Like I said, it, it has been a heck of a journey, and I definitely wish they would have at least got to do a proper goodbye by doing maybe at least like a, hey, Game Informer is shutting down in two months, or Game Informer is shutting down at the end of the year. I, I feel like that's the least they could have done, man. Like I said, just like all these people in the legacy 33 years. And for you to just, for them to just wake up one day, just like, hey, y'all are all losing your jobs, goodbye, like website shutting down, shutting down Twitter account. And just like, damn, damn, man. But, um, cause I know, so their last, the second to last issue that they did was uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, which that sucks for that team because they, that was kind of like part of like the ramp up on the road to, uh, launch because we just got the release date of uh, August 31st the other day for Dragon Age uh, the Veil Guard I should say uh, and so that was one of the second to last issues and then I can't remember what the actual final final issue is let me see if I can find it real quick okay so yeah so so I think Veil Guard Dragon Age Veil Guard was the official last one that came out 
but they were like 70% done with the next issue, which is not going to come out. But I think some, I think somebody mentioned on the, uh, on one of the Man Max, uh, episodes talking to the former staff was that there might be an opportunity for them to potentially do something else with that stuff because like like the sudden shutdown not only was it disrespectful on a base level to the people and the legacy of that publication but it also screws over a lot of the developers who were in the pipeline for upcoming issues and stuff because Imagine you were going to be the next cover after Veil after Dragon Age, and so you kind of start your planning and stuff around. Like, okay, hey, we're gonna have the cover reveal, and then we're gonna have this big blowout, and yada yada yada. You're gonna have like your your uh, marketing beats and stuff, whatever lined up, and now all of a sudden the train gets derailed because it's like crap. They came out talk to the team, got to see the game, whatever the case may be or whatever, and now it's just gone. And so it's like, well, now what is that team going to do? You know, it's like, at least like with the Dragon Age thing, at least the magazine got out um, and stuff. So, which I might see if I can go around and try to track down a copy of that final issue, maybe. Um, I hope I can, because I, I would love to at least like have that because, yes, a long time ago I did transition over to the digital copy of it just because the times changed and especially with me moving around a lot or whatever um i didn't want to keep having mail going to different locations or whatever so i just switched it to digital for convenience but now i'm like man i wish i kind of would have continued doing it um and then just throwing them away so but like i said i, I might try to go and see if i can maybe track down a physical copy somewhere um, out there just for for legacy purposes and things like that so but um, but yeah so much love to Game Informer um, and like I said I wish you could have gotten a proper farewell because like I said it would have been still sad but if they would have at least like, okay hey y'all got to the end of the year so it's okay well hey well, we're gonna do maybe two more cover stories because we'll do because what because the dragon age one what month would it, would that qualify as uh, i don't even know but let's say that was the august issue whatever so maybe you get september and october at least two more and then you can kind of work on a final farewell um legacy edition or whatever i think that would be like a super dope way for it to go out but no just pull the plug so but anyway i am now just rambling or whatever in frustration but like i said just shout out to game informer shout out to all the people who laid off and like i said i hope y'all find success um in other places and maybe hopefully there is some way that game informer might get to live on either as a different entity or something or whatever or maybe get it to get the name or something i don't know but I hope there is hope, especially when we recently had a situation where te where Microsoft was going to shut down Tango GameWorks earlier this year or whatever, and then we got the news last week that um, that the uh, PUBG uh, parent company uh, bought Tango GameWorks and Hi-Fi Rush IP so that I can continue to live or whatever. So, but anyway, so that's it. Like I said, let me know what you guys think of everything I had to say today from everything with the arrival of Concord and then the departure of Game Informer. So, but with that, I am out. I've been talking for a while. Teeth starting to hurt. <laughs> so, I'm going to go chill. But y'all have an awesome day and rest of your weekend. Like I said, I'll be back later in the week, hopefully, talking about the madness that was the first week of school for my kids and other life stuff going on. But, as I always say, treat yourself to something nice, read some manga, watch some anime, TV shows, and movies, and of course, play some video games, and live your best life. And with that, I am out. Y'all have an awesome day. Rest in peace, Game Informer. I hope you will rise from the ashes somehow. 
and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.